<laughs> you just okay. got back from uh, Atlanta. You were at the convention. Yeah, I was. Why, no, why did you go down there? What was the purpose of that? I went there just to see how they make a fool out of themselves mm -hmm. and how they do it. Because <laughs> I don't find that uh, you don't need writers when you go there because mm -hmm. they're, they're more ridiculous than anything any comedian could think of. Yeah. It's hard to believe that uh, that this is a convention where Dukakis was the winner. He looked like he'd lost a long time ago. He looked like he was nauseous and hiding. He was ashamed of himself. He, uh, he looked like he was afraid that he might bump into Jackson. He wouldn't know what to tell him, how he won. He uh, looked like he was in the wrong country for the wrong reason. He didn't know why he was there. And Jackson lost, and you could never tell. It looks like Jackson never read the paper. <laughs> Jackson was running around, ha-ha! And Dukakis was hiding. The, the very triumphant. I thought, he I seemed really to be thought, very, yeah. I really thought Jackson won that election. Did you, were, you, were you there for his speech? No, I wasn't there for his speech because I was making my own speech on Broadway at the time, but uh, I was shocked at the way this whole thing looked because uh, Jackson, at the beginning of the campaign, looked like a big winner. Mm -hmm. And then he won and he won and he kept winning. And all of a sudden, while he was winning, he wasn't that popular. <laughs> then he started to lose one primary after another. Yeah. After he lost nine primaries in a row, he became the biggest sensation in the country. <laughs> and everybody said, there's nobody bigger than this. Why? Because he can't win. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as they found out he can't win an election, he became the biggest hit in America. And everybody throughout the uh, the whole convention area was only thinking about one thing. Is he happy? Is he mad? Is he sad? They were afraid. Is he uh, going to get hurt? Is he going to give him something to eat? Give him a cookie? Give him a place to sit down? <laughs> they were doing anything to keep him happy. And Dukakis kept running around. Is he okay? Is he mad? Is he happy? <laughs> I never saw I never saw a loser look like a winner so much. Imagine if Springs got knocked out by Tyson and from the floor he says to Tyson, one more move, I'll kill you. <laughs> he has a very, uh, very enthusiastic, he's a lot of verve, this man, doesn't he? Oh, he does he have verve. What about now? Uh... Every time, I never saw so much verve in a person in my life. It's just the opposite of Dukakis. Dukakis looks like he's going to pass away by himself. <laughs> And he looks like he can't open his mouth. He's always mumbling. He's mumbling. You know why he's always mumbling? He's no. married to a Jewish woman. Oh. <laughs> he's married to a Jewish woman. He is. That's why he's mumbling so much. He's afraid to open his mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's afraid to open his mouth. <laughs> Listen, uh, <laughs> Dukakis never becomes president. He'll be the first president we ever had. He'll be afraid to leave the house. Uh -huh. <laughs> They'll tell him, I'm going to see Gorbachev. You're going to see Gorbachev without me, you Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> They'll say, don't worry, I'm coming home tomorrow. Tomorrow you can't come in the house. Tomorrow is Marjan. Stay the hell out of here. <laughs> you know what's funny, what's funny, funny to me is when a person becomes president, you depend on his wife to keep the country secrets. Yeah. I never met in my life a Jewish woman that could keep a secret. <laughs> Can you picture her keeping a secret? If she makes one trip to the beauty parlor, we'll all be wiped out in a second. <laughs> The Russians won't eat spies. They won't eat spies. They'll open a beauty parlor across the street from the White House, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what about the... Uh... Well, I really enjoyed the convention. Thank you. Me. I really... <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a I couldn't time. be happier. I had a fascinating <laughs> time because, because I really did enjoy Jackson's speech. Uh -huh. The speech was brilliant. You don't know if it was a speech or a song. Everything rhymed and rhymed. I don't fly, I don't go. I don't die, I don't know. Everything, it looked like he was going for a Grammy Award. Uh -huh. for <laughs> it was like a song. Everybody started dancing. Some people forgot to listen. Yeah. You, uh, you really don't need me out here, do you? I don't. <laughs> about the uh, Democratic ticket? Oh, I got Lloyd nothing but Benson. thoughts. I'm not that busy. I'm working for nothing. I'll take chances. Uh -huh. uh, what, what did you say? What about Lloyd Benson? Do you know Benson, anything about this Benson. man? Oh, yeah. Texas? Young, yeah. Senator from Texas? Great, great. Yeah. The only guy did you in the meet country, him down there? No, I didn't meet him. He, yeah. was, he was too busy being boring to somebody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's not nice to say, but no. he really is the, the only guy that I think is more boring than Dukakis.
Really? I took, that's why it took um, three months to pick out a vice president. He, compared to him, he looks like a personality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it amazing, isn't it amazing that Dukakis took a guy who is, feels exactly the opposite of him on every issue? Mm -hmm. Because Benson is exactly like Bush. So right. he took a guy, first he says he has a great crusade, a great crusade about certain liberalism, progressivism, certain traditions he wants to accomplish because of the Reagan administration stinks, Bush is terrible, the whole place stinks. Right. So he came to reform it and to go a whole new direction. Then he takes a guy exactly the opposite of him, Just who like agrees Bush. with everything Reagan right. and Bush does, sure. and it has exactly their voting, voting record, right. but exactly the opposite of his own direction to take a guy who disagrees with him on everything to be his vice president. Right. But you pick an assistant who disagrees with everything you want, Huh? Mm. Does you, this make sense? But if, if you really want to, if you really want to take somebody from the opposite side, we could take him. We could vote Republican. Why do we need him? Right. We could vote for Bush and have the real thing. We don't need him. <laughs> this, he tells you that these people are bad for the country, but for him, they're good. Right. Well, it's, I guess, the idea of getting a balanced ticket. Of course, if it's the idea of getting a balanced ticket, you could vote for different people and different parties. You don't have to vote for one party to get a balanced ticket. The other guy is on the other side, so vote Republican. You don't need two guys on the same side. That's right. why there's two parties. Right. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> yeah. So you're suggesting that maybe you vote for a Democratic president and a Republican vice president. I'm not, well, can the whole that be thing done? I don't no think sense. you can do that. The whole thing doesn't make no sense. Benson should be on the other side. Does it make sense to have Benson, Jackson, and, and Dukakis all on one side? The three of them would never agree on anything. Yeah. He won't be a, Dukakis won't be a president. He'll have to be a referee. Yeah. <laughs> because they don't agree on anything as far as all three are concerned. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but I think they're just using Benson to help him get elected, to help that's, him get Texas. Well, well, they that's don't, what well, I, mean. I mean, once they get in, well, the, the well, man won't open his Bush mouth. Did, Bush did exactly the same thing when he was running against Reagan in the primaries four years ago. He said Reagan was wrong about everything. He called it voodoo economics. He called the man a guy who doesn't know what he's doing, what he's saying. He's incompetent. He's in the wrong business. He shouldn't even be in this country. Then he became the vice president. All of a sudden, he said, well, he was right all the time. I never said it. I never meant it. I don't know why I, I didn't even believe what I was talking about. That wasn't even me talking. It was my brother-in-law. I don't know. His brother-in-law. It was his brother-in-law talking. <laughs> what, uh, yeah, tell me about the, the movie, Caddyshack 2. This opens uh, Friday, huh? Friday, tomorrow. Tomorrow, right, tomorrow. Right. I know you haven't got writers, but tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all right. This is not your regular business. No, that's right. <laughs> uh, but did the movie turn out all right? You... I think the movie is going to be one of the great sensations of all time. Uh -huh. I, say it, I say it for only one reason. It didn't come out yet. Nobody could call me a liar. <laughs> but, but, uh, frankly, well, uh, frankly the... I'm proud of one thing. I'm proud of one thing, that it's a clean movie. Uh -huh. You know, the big trend now is to put in sex scenes in every picture, whether they're relevant to the story or not. Uh -huh. And it's preposterous and stupid. No matter what a picture is about, all of a sudden there's a sex scene in it, doesn't have anything to do with the storyline. They think people right. are idiots that they have to see sex in sure. every picture. Yeah. Not necessary, and it's irrelevant. And we have sex when it serves a purpose. And you know what they always tell you? They always tell you, they always tell you, well, you have to have sex in every picture because everybody does it, and sure. you have to show what everybody does. That's right. And I keep saying to them, everybody also has soup. Yeah. How come Nobody's I never, how come I never yeah. see a plate of soup exactly. in any movie? Good point. The truth is that both people have soup than sex. You look to me like you had enough sex, but I'm sure you're ready for no, soup. I was. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, it's called. Uh, I, never heard, I never heard anybody say, I'm so tired, forget the soup. I yeah, never heard. That's, that's <laughs> Does anybody's wife ever say to him, <laughs> I got such a headache, soup is out. Yeah. I never heard. <laughs> All well, these are jokes. I don't I know, know if you know, I know, I know. <laughs> How come I'm such a hit with them and you keep staring at no, me like well, I'm a I want, to, I want to thank you for dropping by and proving that, that, that you are qualified to do a one-man show. Um, it's the world according to me and uh, continuing to run a huge hit for you. Nice going. That's great. I appreciate it. I nice appreciate to have you here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.